Uh, I'm Amar Carey, um, author of Girl with All the Gifts and Felsite. I'm at Strathmore Studios in Clerkenwell, and I'm here talking to Finty Williams, who is in the middle of recording the audio version of Felsite, my new novel, which comes out in April. And she's agreed to, uh, to have a chat with me about that process. Hi, Finty. Hello. So I'm, I'm curious, obviously you do lots of different kinds of acting. Voice acting is, uh, is only a small part of what you do. And it must be very different. It must offer sort of different challenges and different pleasures from stage acting and TV acting. It does, because I, I was actually talking to somebody the other day who said that in their opinion, it was the purest form of what we do. Because, you know, you're on stage or you're on television or you're on film and you have costumes and makeup and the hair and you know you're beautifully lit and and that can sometimes take away from the story that you're telling but when you're actually just sitting in a room like this and you're telling a story that's all you have to communicate right just the one channel just the one channel you have your voice that's it you don't have your face you don't have your hands you forget how much you use your hands when you talk um Sometimes I find myself in, in sort of large pages of dialogue. I'm rather thankful that people can't see me because I wave my hands about and, you know. It, it, it's, a, it's a really... I, th I personally think it's actually quite a hard thing to do. I'm sure, yeah. Because it just focuses you in on that, the vocal performances. Absolutely. And, and sometimes you take for granted how you say something. And then you actually, you know, you're lucky enough if you're told by your producer that, that actually that didn't come across the way that you wanted it to sound. So sometimes you have to go against what you think sounds natural to make it sound understandable. Right. And of course, you're, 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 um, you're kind of animating, you're giving life to a whole cast of characters. Yeah. So you're taking on role after role after role yeah. in, in the course of the performance. Mm. How, do you, how do you approach that? Um, I have to cast people I know. They don't necessarily have to be actors or people in the public eye, but I have to be able to put a face to a character um, so I sort of know how they stand or so that, so that when there is a dialogue between them and another character on the page, that you have a sort of thing inside you that that if you know that it's somebody, you know, who stands very tall or holds themselves in a certain way, that you can almost adopt that. Speak from their space. To speak from, exactly, speak from their space. Right. And then do you, um, actually, I, I already know the, the answer to this question because we talked a little bit about, about, about it before, but um, what, what do you need to do with the text before you come into the performance? Are there any sort of um, preparations that you do, rituals? I read it twice. Um, <laughs> it's a really egotistical thing to say, but I always pick out the character I could play. <laughs> right. Um, just so that you have some kind of um, baseline that you go back to. Tricky if it's a book all about men, but you sort <laughs> of have to find something about yourself in one of the characters. Right, and then everything else can kind of map and then from you, there. Yes, then you can sort of... You can plot things around it. But you're telling me you actually don't usually have a text anymore. You work from, from a file. Yeah. Um, has, that, has that change, uh, has that been significant for you or not so much? It's just the same process. It's the same process. It's actually, it, it's a much more fluid process because you don't have to pause when you turn the page anymore. Um, and, and curiously, psychologically, if you're sitting there with a sort of vast amount of paper to get through, it can seem a much longer process. Right. Whereas if you're literally just sort of swiping pages, you're amazed. Actually, I, I picked up a book last night and I, I showed my boyfriend and I said, I did that many pages today. And yet for me, it was, you know, it doesn't feel psychologically quite so strenuous. Because it's, it's sort of more organic. Yeah. Um, can, can we... 
focusing on uh, the the books of mine that Absolutely. you've uh, that you've read for. So I mean, Girl with All the Gifts has been your 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 um, your audio version of Girl with All the Gifts has been incredibly well received. Obviously, you won the 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 audio award for it, mm -hmm. and it, the, the the reviews have been uh, I think stellar is is uh, an appropriate word. Um, how does that feel? I mean, do you, do you do you read your reviews, or do you try to sort of stay um, sort of aloof from all of that stuff? Um, it's the only award I've ever won, so I'm oh, right. really really <laughs> thrilled about it. Congratulations! Since, I think since a gymnastics award when I was about twelve. Um, but uh, I I don't tend to read them. I've been told by a, a couple of people who uh, who I know and respect that they'd listen to it. And that they really enjoyed it. And although everything else is lovely, um, I always think that if you can affect one person by something that you've read or that you've been on stage and you've done or, or anything, then that's kind of, you've reaped the rewards. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's wonderful, isn't it? If it's somebody whose opinion you actually value, who yeah. turns around and says that was that was good. When Joss Whedon uh, tweeted <gasps> that he'd read the book, that, that was... Uh, that felt like, yeah, wow, I've arrived. You have, I, I might just get on my knees and sort of bow down in so, front of you. So, someone tweeted, someone else tweeted, you've won at life now. <laughs> just <laughs> reading life stuff. Um, I love that. That's good. Did, did you have a favourite character in Girl with All the Gifts? I love the two women, Caldwell and Martineau. Love right. them. But I think you have an extraordinary ability. We, we have a saying in our house about Stephen Sondheim, who writes musicals that as a man, he has an extraordinary talent at being able to write women as women see themselves. And you have that as well. You, you absolutely you. write, you write women almost as though you were a woman. That's, if that's not an insult, that, no, that's very high I hope praise. that's a compliment. Uh, 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 it's definitely a compliment. I, I know. I know who I have to thank. Um, immediately before Girl, I co-wrote uh, two books with my wife and our daughter. Did you? Uh, so, so I, I, for two years, I was writing with two very strong, strong-willed women, and I, I think I picked up a lot from that. I think I absorbed certain sort of uh, um, absorbed is the wrong word. I think what happened was um, when you when you when you collaborate on a text, yeah. you kind of you have to triangulate on a style that you're all comfortable with. Yeah. So we, we worked out a, a style between the three of us and I think some of that carried over then into Girl. I think it absolutely did. I I, I mean I think it is quite extraordinary Thank the you. way that you can do that. So, so now you're working on Fell Side, which is yeah. a, a, a different proposition again. Um, you know, it's a, in some ways a sort of uh, uh, a darker book, I guess. Even even I though thought it was very dark. Even though Girl with All the Gifts has kind of the the zombie apocalypse happening in the background, um, Felsite goes to some more uncomfortable emotional places. Yeah. So, what, what what's your experience been so far in in reading I, for that? I think it's I think it's an absolutely brilliant book. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and and certainly when I was going through it when I first got it, none of it was work having to read it. I really, really loved reading it. Um, I think I think with The Girl With All The Gifts, because the, the danger had a face, you could kind of get your head around it much more easily. Right. Whereas in this, because, because it opens you up to a world that we have no idea about its existence or its presence or... Or anything like that. I think it's a much, much darker book. Much darker. Uh, it certainly made me think. I loved. I absolutely loved it. Do you, do you have a favourite scene or a favourite uh, favourite character? I love it when when Alex takes Jess into the world of all the dreams, but they but the second time when they haven't quite gone to sleep, and there were the, the towers without the windows and the doors. Right. I, th I just thought that was amazing. And the dog and the man with his knuckles and oh, great! It's uh, it's, a, it's a, it was strange writing those scenes because you step out of a sort of um, uh, a very realistic plane, if you like. I mean, the prison the prison has to sort of work has as a realistic setting, yeah. Um, and it, you have to sort of feel the claustrophobia uh, and so on, and then you suddenly go into this limitless expanse. It was uh, it, it's a, it's kind of a, a book of contrast, and it must be 
Did, did you feel that in reading it? Absolutely, because because you have the prison that's very austere and the, the yellow and black and they're very sharp, acute colours and the sounds and everything and suddenly you go into this world that's all sort of like, what is it, treacle on a stick? Mm. Oh, I just, I love that and, and the different colours of the, of the different dreams and I thought, it was, I think it's really, really amazing. You, you, you've um, you've been doing this for a long time now, reading uh, audio books. Um, you've done like thirty seven or thirty eight in total. Is is it a big part of your your life in a day to day, week to week uh, sort of sense? Uh, I, I I I once had to do a book that was very very hard, um, and I had to get it done in five days. And I was doing a show in the West End in the evening, um, and that nearly killed me. I can imagine. Because you're, you're kind of putting down one skill set and picking up another. Yeah, but it, it, it is extraordinary when, when you inhabit the world of a book, if, if it's a really, really good book like yours are. You, 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 just like you are when you read a book, you get so immersed in that world that it is actually really hard to then come out of that world and put yourself straight into another one. Sure. And it, it's actually... It, it actually makes me really, really tired by the end of the day because you sort of feel like you've lived this journey for 100 pages, 120 pages, however many it is. I have a friend, Liz De Yeager, who does a book blog and uh, the, the, the little uh, motto over the top of the page is uh, whoever said I only only have one life to live had obviously never read a book. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. It, it is an immersive experience, isn't it? And and when you're when you're doing the uh, the audio version, you're creating that world for, for other people. I sort of think of it like colouring it in. Right. You've created it. You've done all the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, not true. I, um, I'm just there to put like little flowers on the side. Or... It, it's um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because my, my my background is in comic books. So for a, for a long time, I, I I wrote scripts for comics. And in that instance, you're 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 kind of um, the first stage in a process that then goes through. Absolutely. The, the, the penciler, the inker, the colorist, and they're all sort of adding their own visions to yours. And in the same way, I think you know, you're taking. The, the raw words on the page and you're adding you're you're, you're layering in yeah. uh, emotion and 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 atmosphere um, can i ask you a question sure do you think your your beginnings as a as an artist um, because your books are very very visual in in so many ways they're very visual as being able to see exactly what it would look like if there was a film of it, which is lucky. That's, um, that's good to know. But but they're so colourful and they're so descriptive. Do you think that's where? Do you think that that had a beginning as as your work as an artist through, through, through the comic stuff? I'm sure I'm sure it did. Yeah, because uh, when you write a comic script, obviously art direction is a big part of it, mm. and. Um, there's this this weird process whereby you start off writing in a very very um, explicit, fully rendered form, because you don't know what the artist's going to do, and you kind of feel like you have to spell everything out. And then between the two of you, you work out um, a, a sort of a vocabulary for a particular book, really? uh, and you become more and more sort of it's more 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 and more shorthand, more and more telegraphic, mm. because you start knowing what the artist's strengths are, and you start playing to that specifically. I'm sure, I'm sure it did help. I mean, the, the other thing it gave me was uh, uh, the ability to handle structure. Because when, when, when I started writing novels, they were big, formless bags of story. They weren't really going anywhere. But with a comic, you've got a very limited canvas. Yeah. And it's it's this long, not that long or that long. And you mm. have to kind of, you budget every page. So I think it did help. But but what's ex what, what's so extraordinary about your books is that every smell is described every touch is described every color every the feeling of of how people's emotions feel it it, it really is extraordinary thank you um I, I, i'm not sure what uh you know where that comes from whether whether, uh, whether it's a sort of side effect of the way i i sort of think myself into the world but when you when you first started acting um was audio books were presumably not a not a part of your repertoire back then? Not how, at all. How did you get into this world? Uh, I I think I was just I was asked to do a children's book, um, and and it sort of led on from there. So you know I can do the little high voices still. <laughs> I can still do the children's books. Right. 
Do, do you have a favourite form of acting or do you, do you enjoy working in all different media at the same time? I'm really lucky to do whatever job gets offered to me. Right. I just, I feel lucky enough to say that I'm an actress and I can pay the bills doing that. I, I, I find, I mean, at the moment I'm doing uh, a lot of prose writing, I'm doing a lot of, a lot of screenwriting, which, mm. is, which is wonderful, um, and I'm still doing some comics. Uh, every so often I'll do a radio play, and I, I think there's a, there's a sense in which it kind of keeps you fresh to sort of con constantly be doing different things and, and sort of uh, stretching different creative muscles. And how lucky are we to be part of a profession that's as varied as this one? Yeah, yeah, we're very lucky. So th th thanks, thanks very much for, for agreeing to talk to me today, Finty. It's great to meet you. And thank you for writing such incredible books. Thank you for bringing them to life. <laughs>